everybody. Welcome in for another episode of Vol Club Confidential. I'm your host, Austin Price. The orange and white game is now behind us, which means we got to turn our attentions to baseball. We bring in the volunteer clubs, Sheridan Gannon and Sheridan. The orange and white game, first tailgate we've had in a while. Mm-hmm. Nice success. Yes, it was awesome. So we had a great time at the Orange and White tailgate with all of our members. Um, it was a great turnout. We even had the members stay who didn't have tickets to the Orange and White game. Watch the game. Yeah. yeah, we watched it with them um, at our like tailgate tent. It was a lot of fun. It was really cool. Maybe we'll do that in the fall with some football games. Who knows? But that was a lot of fun. And then we also had an activation in Vol Village. So hopefully, you know... Um, everybody enjoyed it that came out and, and saw it so they got to hang out with zakai and shoot papa shot and it was a good time when you say activation explain that to the to the people that don't understand what that means yeah absolutely so we have an on-site activation uh which basically means that we are going to have a presence um at a certain location it, it's determined by the vault network and we are able to interact with fans members um potentially future members answer questions Mm -hmm. answer questions about the ball club and then have them do something fun um you know for for example this last time was with zakai ziegler um coming off you know a a great season and so it was really cool to have the fans interact with him and for baseball you'll have a uh, activation for a couple of friday games coming up in the month of may yes we will so for the last two home series for baseball we will have an activation um we're still figuring out what we want that to be definitely want it to be fun and engaging hopefully we can have some football players there um but yeah so we will be there and we hope to see a lot of you guys and then at the end of may the sec baseball tournament down in hoover Mm-hmm. the volunteer club will be there yes so uh once the season wraps up at home we'll make our way down to hoover um we'll have a big presence there we'll uh we'll keep all of our vol club members updated on what that looks like she shared in gannon now let's learn more about our sponsor knoxville smiles knoxville smiles provides everything from pre- basic preventive services to full mouth rehabilitation and it's all done with patient relationships as the focus Knoxville Smiles delivers state-of-the-art dentistry using robotics, digitally designed restorations, and more. But they still believe in good old-fashioned caring relationships that make it about you. Jeremiah, you're a son of a coach. When did you kind of first fall in love with football because i'm sure you were around it a lot yes i was i would say when i first fell in love with football is i don't have a specific date but um, my dad would do chapel for the nfl teams whichever there was a couple teams that he that he coached with that coaches that are on that team now that he coached with so for example dirt cutter when he was with the tampa bay bucks um i remember my dad did chapel for them and he called me up on stage the night before the game and he, Jameis Winston's there, Cameron Brates there, and I'm just like, I'm just fanboying all these guys, and I'm like six years old, and I'm nervous as, as crap, uh, standing behind my dad, and like he's just giving them um, the gospel. And I think ever since then, I was just like, man, I, I would love to play in the NFL. I, uh, I want to play football. And he got me into playing football as soon as I could, as soon as we could put the pads on, we were playing. Um, he freaking had me doing long snapping drills um, just in case I didn't pan out to be a good athlete. Um, so, but I would just say since a kid, all I can remember is football. Uh, my dad tells me a story that soon as I was, soon as soon as I was born, he got me in a little linebacker stance holding me. Um, so he's just always spoken on me and he made me fall in love with the game of football. Are you Tennessee's emergency, emergency, emergency long snapper? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. No, sir. Definitely not. What, what, what was it like growing up? Because I mean, where he had coached at different spots, Missouri, Bowling Green, so on and so forth. In fact, Coach Banks actually was a, what a GA for for your dad yep. way back in the day. Yep. I mean, what was it like growing up the son of a coach? Because I mean, they kind of have a certain expectation, and you got to kind of live up to it. It was great, honestly. I wouldn't ask for anything else. Um, I mean, I didn't think it was any different than anything. That's just how I grew up. But even when I first started playing, we first started getting film. That was the biggest thing. Always watching film with him. And I just I just liked watching it because I was watching it with him. And then it kind of turned into, oh, I'm actually learning. And then, oh, like, I freaking like this game. Um, so just those late nights watching film with my dad, even when I was 12 years old, um, 
that was a great thing and he's he's always force force feeding me making me eat some food um just because he knows that's how you get big like that's how you get the gains on so just from him cooking meals have a little workout set in my garage um and watching film with him I remember he always talks about we had this little punching bag and it wasn't for punching it was just for using my hands to try to get off a um a blocker so it's, it was great does that make it easier to watch film now because i mean i know some guys if they didn't watch a ton of film in high school it's a huge adjustment when you get into college because i mean that you spend so much time in the film room does it make it easier for you just because it's all you've ever done i would think so yeah um me i love practicing and then as soon as practice is over i gotta go watch the film just to just to make reassure myself behind the, how the day went and then we go back in the meeting room and then watch the film again um so for me it definitely makes it easier because i've always just loved watching film how often do you make a mistake in practice and you're like it feels like a mistake and then you get back to the film room and it wasn't mm -hmm. or vice versa where you think i did that pretty well and you get back and you go actually i should have taken a better angle there all the time um my dad always said it too um it's never as good as it seems and it's never as bad as it that's seems that's my life motto yep. man. Yeah. um so that's why as soon as practice is over i gotta go look at my ipad and to really see before i really get pissed off before the day um if i felt like i had a bad day or get too ahead of myself if i felt like i did really good um because film never lies so you're kind of an old school guy right i mean your mentality your thought process um but your game i don't think is super old school mm -hmm. i mean you're a good athlete right. um you know it's not like you're just an in the box guy no um you've been playing both in spring you like the versatility because you feel like that gets you probably to the field faster 100 percent um and even high school i love being a backside linebacker because sometimes i feel like you get kind of hidden um the quarterback can't see you as well um and really just whatever i can do to get on the field um if we have somebody go down at will i think coach would rather put the best linebacker we have available rather than the best will available you know obviously i, I think you like you know coach bj but you know new new linebackers coach and coach Inge, you know what, what What have you thought there bj was great um i loved him to death he recruited me for so long um he had a way that he went with his coaching and i liked it to be honest um but coach Inge definitely brings more of a family feel um when you, when you do wrong he's going to get on your tail get mad but when you do right he's going to congratulate you and tell you like how you did good and why you did good and definitely makes it more of a fun learning environment with coach inch what's he done to make it more fun because i mean like he you know he he like he he got he he runs me of my dad he's just got a little corny to him yep. that like you know like you're like oh i can't believe you said that but then you're like that's actually funny yeah uh he's very confident he doesn't he's not going to change the way that he does things just because people feel a certain way um very confident um he's corny um but i think it's funny to be honest sure, yeah. um keeps you on your toes you don't really know what he's going to say but one thing about him he always keeps it real he's not going to lie he's not going to try to make you feel some type of way he's just going to let you know exactly how it is um and that comes with his confidence some kids they come in here and they, they expect to play right away right and, and they get depressed or, or down or, or or mad if they're not i think because of the way you were raised your dad looks at things a certain way like you know you got to kind of earn it like it ain't going to just happen you know right did, did that help prepare you for like okay i've got to kind of work my way into this it, it definitely did and i came into a linebacker squad we had a lot of people but there were some injuries and like we didn't have the deepest linebacker squad so off the bat i was like i could really have a chance to play when my name is called so i was going to work as hard as i can until that day came and and you're right. My dad always was like, you got to have to work for years and then you can finally, finally get your spot, you know, a thousand hours. Um, so last year to be able to play was a huge blessing, but it definitely, definitely comes from my mindset that my dad taught me and just staying down until you come up, but doing the right things while you're staying down. What's the biggest lesson you learned in year one? Be prepared. You never know. You never know what's going to happen. Um, Cause I know, coach would even just throw me out there last year without even really telling me before um just because of how well we prepared before and if you're not prepared you're going to look like a fool and prepare preparedness gives confidence so how much confidence you carry in right now a lot a lot of confidence um you have to play in mic position um there's going to be accidents there's, there's going to be bad technique but I, I carry a lot of confidence and pride um playing this mic mic position 
We had one person say on the general's quarters, which is our message board at VolQuest, you know, after you talked to the media earlier last week, um, I could see it in his eyes. Like he just, he looks like he's really confident. Like there's a, like is, uh, there's a, there's a calm there. Like yep. I'm not like, you know, you know, thrill, thrill a minute. You right. know, the game slowed down for you. Yes, sir. Was there a moment in time? Because you, you said to me when we did the, the media availability, not just from Citrus Bowl to now, mm-hmm. but from end of regular season to Citrus Bowl, yeah. you could tell a huge difference in you. Right, because people probably don't know, but after the regular season to the Citrus Bowl, we have another 15 practices, and that's basically a spring practice if you if you think about it. Um, and it's kind of slowed down more, slowed down practices, but that, that, that 15 practices I got a lot better, and I was very confident building on top of the season that I had knowing that I could play in the SEC and make make big time plays in the SEC so all that all that brings that together what do you like most about the linebacker room this this year everyone is super humble um if someone makes a great play the other dude is not jealous um it's great play right there I like how you use your hands I think or, the D-line rooms like that because that's what it feels like it feels like you all kind of become the D-line room yeah. in a lot of ways I definitely think so because you have guys all over and guys that could probably all make the play. Um, so you can't get you can't get jealous of a teammate when they make a play. Um, learn from learn from what they do and congratulate them. So, who do you try to emulate your game after? There, there's a lot of people. I like Luke Keekley's mindset, um, the way he watched film. Um, there's so many linebackers out there though that just. I try to emulate and bring and bring my my what I bring to the table, film, physicality, speed, um, instincts. So th- there's a lot of people I emulate, but I don't want to just say one person. The weight you've put on is probably what 15, 16 pounds. Yep. What do you want? What what, what do they want you to play at? What do you want to play at? What they, do you What do you want to be? They want me to sit at two thirty right now. I honestly want to be able to become two thirty five. Because you go lose some. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that, that I want to be two thirty five after I lose some. Like if that makes sense. Like be able to hold a solid two thirty five. Um, but we'll see. Two thirty is fine. I feel I feel I feel heavy enough right now. And you arrived at what? Two fourteen. So the heaviest I got was two thirty five, but um, kind of lost a little bit of speed. So. So you can tell that you you can tell the the, the be a half step slower. Yeah. To put on too much weight. One hundred percent. And do you know like what that would mean? Like, can you when if you lose it if you lose let's say five pounds can you say okay that that half step is back? I mean, can you tell that? I don't know if I can tell that just off the rip, but I will say like watching myself on film, like you can tell when you're a little bit heavier. So. In the weight room, what what do you what do you like most? Honestly, honestly, back squat. Um, we don't back squat too much. But I, I love just putting some weight on my back and squatting it. Why? It's hard. <laughs> the, I think back squat is probably the hardest lift, and you got to go in a certain mindset and and get that thing up. So, the strength staff, Coach Kerr, he just no one talks about him, but I mean, like he quietly, like every every guy you see, like John Campbell last spring to fall camp, looks drastically different. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm kind of interested to see what. Lance Hurd looks like, you know, transforming yeah. from spring to fall. Um, you, you see, you know, guys like Caleb Herring put on a ton of weight. You're talking about yourself putting on 16, 17 pounds. What is it they do well both sides of the coin, whether it's, you know, bigger guys that need to lose 20 or smaller guys that need to add 20? Because it seems like it works. Like you don't see mm-hmm. – you see a lot of body change is what I'm saying. I would say credit to the guys that have put on weight because they, they've taken their diet seriously, and I can I've seen that. Um, because no matter what you do in the weight room, if you're not eating the right way, then you're not going to put that weight on. So, but, but Schmidt does a great job of just of telling us how we need to do it. And the, the workout program he has is great. Who's had the biggest impact on you since you've been here? It's a great question. Um, I would say Keenan Peely and Aaron Beasley and Pat Garland, um, those three, I think showed me exactly how you have to do it every single day. Um, the, by the way, they show up in the morning to how they practice, to how what terminology they use, and then just like as a guy outside of football as well, especially Keenan. Like today, he 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 came up and talked to the linebackers, and and he said the two biggest things that he's learned in college football, and it's having one having a strict schedule um, that that go that leads you towards your goals and um 
Number two, um, learning that you have a life outside of football as well. So, so they they taught me a lot, hundred percent. It's easy for Keenan to say he's married. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he, he's a couple of years into marriage, isn't he? You know, it's you know that, that that makes you grow up in a hurry you yeah. know, when you're thinking about more than just yourself. Um, when you look at you know this current defense, a lot of veterans on this defense, mm-hmm. but some new faces. What do you like about it? I like about it just because we can have guys that come in that are new. But the guys that are here, we have, we have stand-up guys, I, w- I will say that. So it, it did not take long at all for the new guys to get accustomed and become friends and, and build a bond. Um, and that's shout-out to the veterans on our team that allows the culture to be like that. Um, super welcoming. Um, any questions you have can be answered right away. And you really just got to watch those guys. And if you follow their lead, then you're going to be in the right footsteps. So, What makes you smile? I would say a tackle for loss, a sack. Um, seeing being with my dad and my mom, family and friends, um, and, and seeing my friends do good, uh, that definitely makes me smile. All right. For more on smiling, let's go to our great friends at Knoxville Smiles and learn more about them. I'm Dr. Mike Costa, Malone and Costa Dentistry. You can find us at KnoxvilleSmiles.com. I'm standing here in front of a dental robot. We're one of two dentists in the state of Tennessee that utilize this cutting edge technology. Do you have a broken tooth, a tooth that's in pain, or a denture that doesn't fit well? Maybe you're a little anxious? You can come in and we offer comprehensive sedation services and utilize this awesome technology to give you precise, accurate care. If you think this technology can help you, visit our website at KnoxvilleSmiles.com. I look forward to helping you. What's something most people don't know about Jeremiah T. Lander? I actually, I like bowling. I got my own bowling ball. Um... I like to say I'm pretty good at bowling. You get the little case. Got my case. I got an old school case. Uh, I'll have to show you sometime. But, yeah, that actually started during corona, uh, the COVID virus. Um, nothing was open but the bowling alley. So me and my friends wake up early, get a great lift in, do what we got to do, and then we were at the bowling alley just bowling, having fun. Um, so I love bowling. So if, if the team goes bowling, are you bringing this only – Oh yeah, it stays in the back seat of my car. the The ball will be there. And and do you catch flack for this? Does everybody go what? The, it it definitely ask a question. They ask a question, and I'm just like, yeah, I I keep a bowling ball what, on me. What color is it? It's blue and red. It's mixed colors. It's got JT carved into it. <laughs> Pretty cool. Middle middle name's what? James. James. Yes, sir. JJT. Yes, sir. What? Uh... What extracurriculars do you have besides bowling? I like fishing as well. Um, I can see that. Yeah, I like fishing. I uh, haven't found too many spots up here. I want to this summer. Um, but I definitely like catching a fish. Um, like getting an extra workout with my friends. I uh, like swimming in the pool. Love swimming. Um, sometimes I just go to the T-Rec indoor and do some laps just because. Well, who's the one guy on this team that you're like, that guy's a lot like me? That's a great question. There's a couple people. Um me and Ben Bolton are, are pretty familiar. Um, I, I wouldn't say there's one guy on the team that really resembles me, though. Um, I don't know who. Even on, I, I, what I mean by that is like the 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 interests. You know, like you guys just you like to do the same things. Mm-hmm. I would say Ben Bolton and Eli Purcell. Um, we're we're all very similar in in some ways. Um, our interests. I think we all just like hanging out with friends. We like to do something outdoorsy, ride some four wheelers. Um, probably not as good of, of bowlers as me though. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they don't have their own none of their own bowling. Balls. No, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't commit to the engraving into the to the specialty ball. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan or LeBron? I like Jordan better. Yeah, hey, I knew you were gonna say that. I would have bet. I, it, you can just tell it with 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 certain kids that come in here. I, yeah. I go ahead, keep going. I like Jordan better, but like LeBron, his stats are just out the roof. So it's kind of hard to say who's who's the better basketball player. But I, I personally like Jordan better. Why is that? Just his mentality. Like, he uh, he didn't say too much. He just went out there and and did his thing. Kind of like you. Yes, sir. Kind of like you. Yes, sir. 
22. You like number 22? I love it. Uh, number two has been my favorite number my whole life. And then I got fortunate enough to wear number 22 last year. Um, and keeping it. Keeping it. Yes, sir. It's your brand. Yes, sir, it is. I feel you. Yes, I sir. like it too on you. Yes, sir. I'm a big numbers it. guy. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm big on numbers. You know, and it, sometimes the off the wall, peerless price, wide receiver wearing 37 mm-hmm. plays, but <laughs> only if you have enough aura about you. Right. To me, if you can go outside the box on a number. Yeah. You definitely make the number, but you got to love to have a good number. Favorite jersey combination? Um, all black, and then the all grays, and then I like the, I like the the white on top with the orange britches. But all black's my favorite. So you're anything but the traditional orange on white. The traditional orange on white's good, but I like I like you switching like the, it up. Uh, yeah. yeah, I understand. Ball walk or running through the tee? Running through the tee. Ball walk. I'm a, I, I'm I'm laser focused. Uh, running to the tee, I can start screaming and running, and you you got 102,000 screaming, um, and and to run through the tee is is crazy. What's the moment? <clears throat> Take everybody through what the moments are like between Apple speech maxims. And then when the tee opens, because you got the smacking of the sign, yep. and there's a kind of like it's almost like a procession of a parade yep. between the locker room and to the entrance of the tee. Take everybody through what 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 you're feeling, what you enjoy about that time. What what's that like? After after the maxims and after we we pray and break it down, uh, like you said, everybody hits hits the sign, and then just a slow walk. And, and seeing the very tip of the stadium and then you can see the VOLS and then what, as soon as you get closer and closer you can see all the fans and then the, the tee just starts like this and then as soon as it opens up to be honest it's just it's a crazy feeling something I've never felt before um, and I'm just running screaming and then it's just everything's hitting me at once and it's game time then as soon as that as soon as the, that tee opens up it, it's the best feeling I've ever experienced did you know they used to go left? Really? Yeah, Tennessee's home side used to be the other side. I did not and know then that. They switched. No, I like going right. Seems right. <laughs> <laughs> seems, seems right to go right. Yeah. Then once you get th- through the tee, mm-hmm. what's that moment like before kickoff? Because uh, everybody go goes down. and prays yep. and all that, but I mean, like, it, 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 like what what are you at mentally in that time? Um, I'm really not thinking about too much. Um, I know that we got special teams coming, so I got to know if I'm if I'm going to be out there. But I hit my prayer, and then I'm really just dabbing everybody up, um, creating energy, um, finding finding the LBs, and then if it's if I'm on kickoff or kickoff return, then it's just locked in on what I have to do. Then is it hard? I mean, let's face it: you play Chattanooga versus mm-hmm. Alabama. Mm-hmm. It's a different feel, right? The yep. stadium feels different. The vibe is different. How do you find the juice? when you're playing an opponent you're supposed to beat? I feel like I always got the juice. If it's game day, the, the juice is going to be there. Um, there's definitely some times where you can – maybe if it's like week eight, week nine, you have a, a off game, um, not playing the best team. The, the energy might be down a little bit. But for me, if it's game day, it's game day. Like the juice is there. If you have an opportunity to go out and compete, especially if you're in Neyland, no matter where you're at, you're at but especially if we're playing at home the juice has to be there um you only have so many opportunities of that and you can't take it for granted um so so for me the juice is always there if it's game day first big home game this year is not to mid-october against florida uh you have two road game two sec road games you got a neutral site game and then some lesser opponents at home um what game are you looking forward to most this year georgia game every game but Every game I'm looking forward to, and we're going to take it one by one, but, of course, the Georgia game. Just because you're from there. Just because I'm from there, yes, sir. What What is it about playing them? Does it, does it give you a little extra juice? You could say a little extra juice, but it's really it's really personal um, when it comes to them um, just because from Georgia, I'm not a big fan of Georgia. I feel like I'm tired of seeing them winning, so uh, I can't wait to see them. What is it that, uh, you know, what drives you – uh, off the field, not on the field. I know mm-hmm. what drives you on the field. What drives you off the field? Uh, my faith in Jesus. Um, 
just trying to live under him and and do things the way that I feel like he would want me to do them. Because uh, being a D1 athlete, uh, you could get you could get in your head and act a certain type of way. But I've always just stuck uh, stuck to my morals and my ethics and what I was raised on, and just being a humble guy and speaking to people and and not feeling people and not making people feel less appreciative. So I would say I take a lot of pride in that. Favorite football movie? Blindside. Love it. Any particular moment in that movie that you like more than the other? I think actually it's not my favorite part, but I think it's funny when the lady's telling them that there's uh they bury bodies under Tennessee Stadium. I don't know if you remember that, <laughs> but I think that's funny. Um but just just really everything, how he was walking on the side of the road, no family, and then a family came and picked him up and he went off from there. I'll always go remember the Titans. That that's a great one too. It is. I love that movie. When Coach Yo says, Herman, leave no doubt. <laughs> yep. Then they just start piling it on that team. That's my favorite part. Yeah, that's a good one. Favorite movie in general? Uh, are what? you a big superheroes guy? Are you a romantic guy? Are you a comedy guy? What do you like? Action, comedy. Uh, my favorite movie is probably World War Z. It's a zombie movie. Um, <laughs> I don't really have too many favorite movies. But that one in particular I like. What about TV shows? Uh, Criminal Minds. I'm an NCIS guy. Okay, I was there, and then I kind of switched over. So, but yeah, Criminal Minds is always good. Besides Andy Griffith, which is the greatest show <laughs> that will ever be created, greatest character, Leroy Jethro Gibbs, NCIS. Yeah, that's a good one. You kind of remind me of a Gibbs. You think so? Yeah. I don't know about that. Kind of no nonsense. Yeah. You know. Maybe. Probably a little friendlier. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I don't know about that one. You got your rules. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. What, uh, you, you talked, you talked about your faith a few minutes ago. Severe Heights. Is it, where, where do you go to church here in town? Um, I really haven't found one church place, but I go to uh, one walk sometimes, uh, it's where a bunch of college students go. Sure. Um, my faith in Jesus has been more of just a relationship with him and just like my, my conversations that I have with him. Um, I would like to find a church here, but um, me and him have great conversations. Does that come from dad, mom? Dad and mom, how they both raised me, um, raised me in church, and and I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, um, so I've always been raised that way. you remember the moment you got saved? I don't remember the moment, but I know I got baptized when I was like eight years old. Um, it was, it's was been implemented in me uh, since I was born. So, For you, uh, you know, obviously the ultimate goal is the NFL. Mm -hmm. what, do you think it, what do you think it takes to get to that level? Consistency um, and availability. Um, if, if you're not playing, then you're not going to be there. And if you're not consistent, then there's no way you're going to be there. So if you're going to be able to show up every single day and be where you're supposed to be on the football field – then I think that's how you get there. Favorite place to eat in Knoxville? Calhoun's. A lot of people, a lot of people hate on me for that, but you, just, you get to sit right on the river and eat some ribs. That's the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll really eat anything. I, I'm with you from an atmosphere mm -hmm. standpoint. I think there's, you know, sitting on Sunset Boulevard in LA and mm -hmm. sitting outside on the road and watching the cars go by like a little stuff like that I, I enjoy that type of thing like, yeah. it's the atmosphere you know more so than the food yep. you know that, that can make a place magical that's magical for you 100% is that where you've always went just when you come to town just if, if mom or dad comes up hey let's go to Calhoun's cornbread dude Calhoun's cornbread I could <laughs> yeah. I'd weigh five million pounds if I lived there right next to a Calhoun yep. I'm already big enough I don't need any more um <laughs> like that, cor that cornbread is fantastic yeah um favorite type of food I would say Mexican food I love me a good Mexican restaurant chips and queso um but really I'll eat whatever um but Mexican food is always fun to go and eat sit down and eat if you're going somewhere where are you traveling to Mm. Are you a mountains guy? Are you a lake guy? Are you an ocean guy? Definitely an ocean guy. Um, trying to find a, spot, a good spot, though. Didn't go on too many vacations when I was young. Um, went to the beach over spring break, which that was really fun. So, But definitely looking for a nice little beach spot that I want to 
visit sometime. Is this? Did you go with your family at spring break, or did you go with your friends? I went with some friends, a couple of the teammates. So yeah. I had a blast. Who'd you go with? I went with Ben Bolton, Josh Turbyville, Josh Hudson, Khalifa Keith, and Nate Spillman. We went down to uh, Santa Rosa. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it was a blast. Turbyville, baby. <laughs> I know it. They're good people. They are. Mom and dad are oh, fantastic. Yeah. Great people. What's one thing you, you want people to know about Jeremiah T. Lander? Um, that I'm, I'm going to give everything I have to to the Vols every single day. Um, I'm blessed to be here, um, and and I'm thankful to be here, and uh, I'm ready for the season. Uh, you're going to get a lot of tackles from me and, and all that. So, A lot of tackles and all that, man. We appreciate you coming out and joining us. You were fantastic. Great look, kind of get a feel for who you are and uh, I know a lot of Tennessee fans are hoping you have a big 2024 season yes sir